Good morning, I'm Lisa Chan in the CBS 5 studio. We'll return to regular programming in a moment. First, we want to update you on a developing story in the East Bay. Part of the MacArthur maze remains closed at this hour after a tanker truck carrying 8,600 gallons of gasoline caught on fire shortly before 4 this morning. Joe Vasquez is live in Oakland to tell us more. Good morning, Joe. Lisa, good morning. We're under the maze, and it is a mess. Take a look behind me. You can see the dramatic damage right there as a connector of this freeway has literally melted and collapsed onto a lower deck. What happened is just before 4 o'clock this morning, a tanker truck carrying 8,600 gallons of unleaded gasoline lost control. He bounced off the embankment. He then flipped over and exploded into flames. <clears throat> Excuse me. The fireball melted the bridge above it, and then the steel connectors melted. The bridge collapsed onto the roadway below. The driver was hurt, but he managed, and he managed to escape the, the wreck. The truck overturned. Uh, the driver was fortunate in the sense he was able to climb out of the tanker truck and walk to a local gas station, which he took a cab to Kaiser Local. Uh, he did suffer moderate injuries, uh, second degree burns to his hands, arms, and face. But in the big scheme of things, we're very lucky here that no one lost it, no one lost their life in this incident. As we look over the scene here, what goes through your mind? You know? We're back live here. Back live. We're uh, actually the two areas most affected here are the lower deck is 80 to 880 south. So we're talking about if you're going from Emeryville toward Hayward, 80 to 880 south. That's the lower deck. The upper deck is 80 to 580 east. That's San Francisco coming over to Oakland, Walnut Creek. So uh, right now, though, we're looking at, uh, matter of fact, a train coming by from Amtrak. Uh, luckily, there is not, a, it's not a populated area beneath here. And the other fortunate situation is that this didn't happen later in the day when there would be a whole lot commuter, a lot more commuters. I should mention that Caltrans structural engineers are on the scene here assessing the damage. It will be expensive. We're talking about millions of dollars, months of construction and then a priceless headache for drivers. I want to take you to a live picture now of the toll plaza. This is what we're told by a lot of people who've come out here to gawk at this scene. What we're seeing is people are cutting across to the left lane because they're kind of stuck, and if they don't turn around, then they're going to end up going over the Bay Bridge into San Francisco. So they are, uh, in some cases, recklessly cutting across traffic to the left lane and then cutting through that little parking lot and they're making their way back to other points in the East Bay. That's just one little glimpse of just how ugly this is going to be for months, possibly, Lisa. Hey, Joe, what caused this uh, driver to lose control of his tanker truck? Well, the police are saying it was likely speed. He probably was speeding. It's a rather narrow turn there. It's not a hairpin, but it's pretty narrow and pretty sharp. And so then he bounces off the embankment and loses control, flips the truck over. Amazing that he escaped with his life. I know you said he was able to walk away and go to a gas station and get some help. Do we know the condition of uh, how he's doing right now? And we understand he's in serious condition, but uh, the CHP says that he had minor injuries, uh, minor burns, that is, to his hands and face. But, uh, you know, imagine being able to walk away from a scene like this. It looks like he's going to be okay. He's over at Kaiser Hospital recovering. Gosh, and, you know, the CHP firefighters, they respond to emergencies on a daily basis. What are they saying about this? You know, if you look at this scene here, you'll see what, in fact, a lot of people out here are saying, which is they're just sort of gawking. They're just shaking their heads, saying how amazing it is. That was the case with police as well. They're just shaking their heads. I mean, and, and then you're, you're going to start to hear other questions. One of the police officers was sort of whispering that, you know, uh, it sort of makes you wonder about the safety of these bridges. Now, this was an intense fire. It did burn for a couple of hours. But imagine the heat that it takes to, you know, cause these steel girders to melt and then for the, the bridge to just collapse and cascade over the side like that and you know, crash onto the lower deck, uh, and not to mention, imagine what could have happened if more people were driving. There were some people stuck on the highway there for a bit uh, behind that tanker. They were not injured, they, but they had to slowly be ushered back off the highway to safety. I know earlier you said that there were some Caltrans engineers on the scene. Have they been able to tell you any more about why they believe that this roadway collapsed like it did? No, I haven't been able to talk to them directly, but uh, 
when we're talking to the fire department here, it clearly was the intense heat. It clearly was the melting of the steel here, which just would take an incredible amount of heat. 8,600 gallons of unleaded fuel, of course, could start a pretty intense fire. And you've seen the pictures. I mean, this was a very serious fire, but it still begs the question how such a major part of a freeway a connector could collapse like that here on the scene. All right, and can you tell us what they're doing right now, Joe, to clean this up and assess the damage? Well, that's the first step, right? So actually the first step is they're just trying to assess whether anything else is going to collapse because there's a little part there on the left that they're looking very closely at and they're worried that there might be more of a collapse. So the main thing is, you know, safety and to make sure that nothing else uh, is underneath it or around it if indeed there's going to be another part that could uh, disconnect there. Then, then you're right, then it's cleanup and, and what a mess it will be. You know, interesting sort of a coincidence, right underneath this freeway is a Caltrans workyard, like a construction yard. Uh, this is where uh, they've been bringing equipment to and from that Bay Bridge uh, part that they've been building here for the last few years. So these guys will be uh, put to work, obviously, to clean this up. And they're talking months. Uh, I don't, you know, the, the initial est estimate is just months, but it could be several months before these connectors are put back. Yeah, people are going to get used, have to get used to uh, finding an alternate route. Joe reporting live for us in Oakland. Thank you. Now let's check in with Heather Hudgens, who is in our traffic center, to see how this is affecting commuters. Hi, Heather. Good morning, Lisa. You know you heard Joe mention that it couldn't have happened at a better time, and it also couldn't have happened in a worse spot. I mean, this is the MacArthur maze where all of those East Bay freeways converge so folks can get in and out of San Francisco. Let's go to Rod and Chopper 5. Rod, we're already starting to see a little bit of backup on 80 westbound. Uh, that portion of southbound 880 is closed, but folks can still get on eastbound 580, am I right? That's correct. Uh, they can still get on eastbound uh, 8, uh, well, 580, not, uh, not 880. Uh, if you're coming from Berkeley, uh, or Emeryville area and you want to say uh, go towards uh, Oakland up around Highway 24 and Highway 980 you can still do that there's a little bit of a bit of a backup it's only backed up to Powell right now and of course you can still get on the Bay Bridge from that uh, that area as well onto the Berkeley curve of course it's still closed if you're leaving the Bay Bridge uh, area and you're trying to get on to uh, 580 that's not going to happen you're going to have to get on Highway uh, 980 and follow that up around to Grand make a U-turn and get back on to uh, 980 if you want to try and get onto 580 or 24. Heather? Yeah, initially so many of these ramps inside the maze were closed because they wanted to make sure that other far parts of the freeway weren't affected. Some were reopened recently. One that I'm trying to figure out is for folks in Oakland on Interstate 880 trying to get into San Francisco, what does it look like for that drive? Going from uh, Highway 880 into San Francisco, yes. is that what you asked, Heather? Mm-hmm. Right now, uh, that's uh, that's looking uh, okay. You can you can get on uh, from 880 over to uh, the Bay Bridge Toll Plaza. That's not a problem at all, Heather. All right, thanks. Let's see. I want to show you from my maps what it looks like. Our real-time traffic sensors show that there is a little bit of a backup on Interstate 80, moving as slow as 16 miles an hour. But I'm going to get over here on my Telestrator and show you exactly what is open. Westbound 80 to southbound 880 is open, as well as westbound 80 to uh, eastbound 580 is open as well. And those are major arteries, so that's some good news. But let's see, it is starting to slow down on the East Shore Freeway. Now, as the hours progress, we're going to start to see traffic really, really get heavy here on uh, westbound 80 through the uh, East Shore Freeway. But your alternates are looking good so far. One of those is uh, Highway 24 was looking at, like it might get very backed up. But since 580 eastbound is open and 580 west, uh, so far that's looking like it's moving at least 71 miles an hour. Uh, for your morning commute, a lot of folks are going to be taking the San Mateo Bridge. Right now, traffic is really light westbound uh, going into Foster City, moving at at least 53 miles an hour for your commute this tomorrow morning as well. The Dumbarton Bridge is an excellent thing. But keep in mind, tonight traffic could get hairy. We've got an A's game. We've got a Warriors uh, playoff game. So uh, you might want to use those alternate routes or an even better option for you is to take BART. Now, a lot of folks don't want to take BART. They want to get in their own car, get there fast, and get out in a hurry. But this is not going to be one of those nights because 880 is affected. So uh, you might want to take BART to get to those games or leave extra early. Another thing tomorrow morning, if you have to take your car, typically traffic is really light before dawn. So if you get in your car before 5 a.m. and you get on the road, you might be able to get into San Francisco or portions of the East Bay a little bit easier. 
but I think the best option for tonight and certainly in the months to come is to take BART and the ferries. BART has already told us that they're going to be operating more trains effective today. Uh, we're trying to find out if there are going to be more ferries operated in the months to come, but uh, BART is one of those options you definitely want to look into. Otherwise, leave really, really early. And of course, check CBS5.com. We'll have all the live traffic uh, impacts on our website as well. Let's go back over to Lisa and the news desk. All right, thanks, Heather. We'll see you in half an hour for another update. And for traffic updates and more video, go to our website. That is at CBS5.com. Now we want to return you to Sports Spectacular in Progress.